This one was sent on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from good brother Oos underscore Sapgood. Okay, is is so is Sapgood his his last name? I'm not exactly is, sure, but he's a big fan of the show. I know that. Is Oos his Christian name? I think it's Oos, U C E. Is that how you would pronounce it? As as far as I see, Oosie? It could be Usi. That's what I was thinking. It could be Usi. Well, here's good brother Usi. Maybe he just he he mistyped and it's it's Lucy and we're talking about a a lady. I don't think it's that, but here's his question. He sent in something. He said he would like to know your thoughts about the last chapter in Sabu's autobiography. Have you seen this? I I have not, unfortunately. I've missed that. Now, before we get going with this, what is your relationship with Sabu if you have one at all? Um, well, I know Sabu. Um, we've been around uh, each other on a limited basis, but over the years, a number of times, the last time I saw him was probably three or four years ago at, at WrestleCade over in Winston-Salem. Um, he was set up there and it had a booth and, and we had a short conversation there, but I know that Sabu is the Sheik's nephew and has been involved in some controversial incidents over the past, but I don't have deep insight into, into what makes Sabu tick. If that's the question you're asking, I will say this again. I've said it before. One of my favorite Twitter interactions ever was a few years back. He put something on Twitter that was something that could be read as derogatory towards you. Naturally, you saw this and you replied paraphrasing here, but Hey Sabu, I didn't know we had a problem. If That's we right. Do, okay, well, wait a minute. Now you're reminding me of something. I just remember this. Go ahead. <laughs> he said, I didn't know we had a problem. If we do, let me know. And he replied, <laughs> Sabu, Sabu, Sabu. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what... <laughs> See, that's the thing. I, I will... It... In the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> over the past 10 years, he's emailed me a couple of times. And I'm bad with phone calls. I'm bad with emails, too. And I don't answer a lot of them because I get so many of them that I've timed that blah, blah, blah. But I try to go through and read. And I saw an email from Sabu, Sabu, and it was, I can't even remember what the email said. But it was like a, a very long sentence with no punctuation about something I wasn't really sure how it pertained to me to begin with and then he's he signed it sabu 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 and and he every time he sends an email he signs like sabu 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 i i don't <laughs> i don't know i don't know what's going what but what about his his book here i i don't know what happened well here is the final chapter entitled fu shout outs <laughs> okay now to all the insecure, jealous, backstabbing, cocksucking, cheap, no-selling assholes I have come across, I'd like to close with some special fuck you shout-outs that I crafted just for you, a la Sabu Twitter style, complete with extra comments for extra emphasis. Three commas after that. To Kurt Angle, because I may have to wrestle you again one day, I won't hit you with a stiff fuck you, but maybe something just a little underneath that and more professional. You know, like, you, sir, I could do without. <laughs> to test, I would like to send a really big fuck you shout out beyond Wait the minute, grave. He's, he's dead. Uh, well, I would like to send a really big fuck you shout out beyond the grave to a bastard who no sold like an asshole and always tattled like a baby. Okay. Did he have a reputation for running to the office? Well, not that I'm aware. Of. Probably, if 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 Sabu wanted him to fucking hold onto a chair while he moonsaulted off the balcony onto his face, <laughs> I can see Tess may have gone to the. I don't know what the incident is that's being referred to here, but I, you know, um, I can see where Test and Sabu would be opposite personalities. Uh, Test was, Test was not one of these guys that instantly adapted to the wrestling business mentally and Sabu with his uncle and grew up around it his whole life and blah, blah, blah. But I can also see where if, if there was a clash of styles, it, it, the chances are Sabu was the one that was wanting to do the, uh, the shit that test wasn't really wanting to do. And I don't blame him to Koji Kanemoto and his no selling bullshit. <laughs> fuck you. And your no selling bullshit. To Jim Ross 
I say fuck you for treating the Sheik like trash and ripping him off. You still owe him money, you cocksucker. (laughs) Feel free to PayPal me the $150,000 or whatever it is at your earliest convenience, prick. That can't be from 88 NWA, can it? we, We talked about this on the show maybe a year or two ago. That he still... 150 grand that he owes the Sheik. And Jim Ross went and poor... All right. Should we tell the whole thing again? Uh, are you thinking that, though? That it's 88 NWA that he's talking about here? Well, yes. Because Jim Ross never had any other interaction with the Sheik, the original Sheik. And the if, if, if another time when Sabu was talking about it, he mentioned Detroit which is why we were commenting on it to begin with a few years ago. But yeah, there, there's no, it, it, to, for the record, Jim Ross does not owe the Sheik $150,000. Not even the Iron Sheik, the actual, the Sheik, Sabu's uncle, uh, the wild man from Syria. And it, somehow, it was just like when Doug Gilbert was mad at me and I had to tell him off and encourage him never to fucking speak to me again. Because he got mad because I wrote the foreword to Howard Brody's book in which <laughs> right. Howard Brody said shit that Doug, for some reason, didn't like and and was cussing me on the internet about it. I just say, you fucking idiot, have you ever read a book before? Do you know how they work? You know, to, just because you have two famous, great, talented family members and you're the fucking redheaded stepchild doesn't mean you can motherfuck me on the internet for writing a foreword to somebody else's book and you don't know how that works. In this case, the Sheik was booked to work the Kobo Arena in Detroit for Jim Crockett Promotions in 1988. Um, They had drawn one house in Detroit when Garvin beat Flair for the title at the Joe Louis Arena in what previous September of 87, and then business in Detroit had just been the shits. And it it was not a... The town wasn't doing anything so at the time kevin sullivan i believe is one to pitch to dusty because kevin had a relationship with the sheik hey uh, what was the first match they did a two-month program the first match was dusty and murdoch against the sheik and sullivan right and then they did a deal in that match where murdoch switched heel on him and they were going to come back the following month with a just reversing the partners or whatever, but it it didn't it didn't come to that. It never came off the second month because point is it was the Great American Bash on tour. I believe it was the summertime of '88, Kobo Arena in Detroit. The Sheik uh, with major local television promotion from Crockett's local TV and big names on the card. A full card for the first time. The Sheik is going to be back in the Kobo in a in a strong position like that with major names on a card in almost 10 years and it did a hundred thousand dollars at the gate it did you know 80 something hundred people at the ticket prices at the time and so they immediately as i said you know booked sheik in the rematch and the blah 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 but then the sheik got mad because when they paid him i don't know how much the payoff was i assume it was fairly generous because let's everybody knew that the reason why that the people came was to see the Sheik back at the Kobo in that light because we've been running a lot of shows and not drawing there but the Sheik thought that because he was the Sheik he should still get 10% of the house which they weren't even doing that for the NWA champion at that point in time Flair wasn't getting 10% of the house he wanted $10,000 for the one night when the match lasted like six minutes right So he no-showed the next month because they didn't give him 10% of the house. I heard this story concurrently at the time from not only from Kevin, but from, from Dusty and everybody else, because we had actually started to do promos where the Sheik was coming back and I'd seen the booking book at, at local promos. And then they changed it. And, you know, so anyway, that's, that issue was known at that time. That's why the Sheik didn't come back the next month, and that's where the issue lay. Sabu somehow thinks, because Jim Ross was the announcer, and I think he had started selling advertising for Crockett maybe at that point, or trying to, selling TV advertising, 
that somehow Jim Ross was the one who should have paid the Sheik the money, and now it's graduated to instead of ten grand, he owes him one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which was more than the fucking house drew. <laughs> And there is no other time when Jim Ross would have had any dealings with the original Sheik. Sheik never worked in WWE or WWF when JR was there in any position, and JR would not owe the money if that was the case to begin with. It would be Vince McMahon, because even when JR was head of talent relations, you think he had the fucking checkbook and, and tell Vince, oh, Vince, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, Sheik. 150 grand because Sabu's pissed. What? That's lunacy. Jim Ross has never been in a position to, to actually be the one to sign the Sheik's check anywhere. And nobody owes the Sheik $150,000. That's crazy. But otherwise than that, to Ric Flair and to, even though I may need him one day, Johnny the Dickhead Ace. <laughs> fuck you both for your political bullshit I would also like to add Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee and Michael Hayes to this list too just because you all really suck you know what now everybody's out there saying well Cornette's the king of bridge burning but you know hey look at that line up there that, that there may be a, some reason why Sabu was not booked steadily in the last 20 years to Vince McMahon oh I'm sorry we left Vince out Believe it or not, I won't say fuck you to you. Oh. Vince, because you never really said anything to my face that was actually not somewhat professional. You have done a lot for the business that I love and given a lot of my friends work. So for all of this, I do have respect for you. I will say this, though. You always shook my hand like a short bus meathead, almost pulling my shoulder right out of the socket. <laughs> what the fuck? And finally, to the rest of you out there wait, who have wait, done wait, me wait, wrong... Wait a minute, 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 hold on. <laughs> For one thing, that's kind of... That's a little shady comment, the short bus meathead, which we all know, we had a phrase down south, which I, I, I will say this in, with the caveat that I encourage people not to say this anymore because it is, it is rude and it makes fun of kids that can't, you know, defend themselves or whatever, but retard strength is what he's talking about. It's what they used to call it when I was a kid in school and down South. And Vince does not do this, the bullshit wrestling handshake. He does a fucking handshake. And it's one of those, I like to show you that I'm a alpha male type of guy handshakes, but he's not going to rip anybody's arm out with it. It, it, shake hands with Billy Gunn some, I encourage Sabu to shake hands with Billy Gunn and see what you draw back it might be a shriveled fucking broken lump um, he's got a firm handshake and he's still not going to jerk anybody's shoulder out but unfortunately Sabu came from the 90's era of guys in the locker rooms where that fucking little two thumb and middle finger handshake, the limp dish rag, the fucking, Hey, I'm smart. I'm with it. I, it. That type of handshake went around amongst the boys. And all of a sudden it was like shaking hands with a goddamn bunch of butterflies. And you're afraid. What the fuck's going on here? It was so stupid because it, the same thing as the whole handshake business anyway, as, as it was taken by, a modern generation who didn't understand it and twisted to serve their own purposes. I've said this a million times. I'll say it again. You did not in the territory days walk in the building. If you were the referee or the head of the ring crew or the guy selling t-shirts and immediately shake hands with everybody up to and including the owner of the fucking company and the booker, if they were over in a corner having a meeting and you walked up and in, and fucking interrupted that just to let them know that you were in the building, you wouldn't be in the building long. But now everybody's got to shake everybody's hand or goddamn, that's the same thing as fucking committing sedition and treason. If you miss a hand, it's the same thing with the fucking goofy working handshake. It used to be the guy's shook hands in a semi-normal fashion, a little bit light, because that was the deal. 
And some guys took it a little further than me, you know, the old handsome Jimmy thing. He he put out t- his two forefingers in his thumb, right? Hey, brother, because that fit his gimmick. But most of the time, the guy shook hands slightly light, but just to get the picture across. The whole origination of that was guys who were smart to the business, who were workers. When you met people, if you shook hands with them and they shook hands stiff, then they weren't smart to the business. But it was a communication between people who were smart back in those days where they would do the light handshake and give the little office Iggy, squeeze, squeeze, and you'd know you were dealing with one of the boys. It was a kayfabe thing. Well, then somehow they started reading about this on the internet when that became a thing and decided that everybody was going to slip you a hand like it was a goddamn limp dick after an orgy and you were getting splooge on your fucking palms. And that got ridiculous. And then some of the guys started going the other direction, fed up with this ridiculous, fictitious ghost handshake and started trying to crank on people. But Vince has a very firm handshake, and that's the way he likes it back. I suggest giving it to him. And finally, to the rest of you out there that have done me wrong, (laughs) and to all you trolls on the internet, F you. And that is the... Apparently, the closing chapter of Sabu's autobiography. A pithy read. (laughs) That's right. Cause for some reflection in there. What's the underlying meaning? Does it it encourage modern society to continue in the way it has? Or does does it encourage you to reflect and possibly change the pattern of society? This is a deep read. One that will be talked about and critiqued for many years in various universities and colleges of higher learning. Well, you know, Jim, whether you're someone getting a extra hard handshake where you feel like your shoulders are about to be pulled out of the socket, or a wrestler told to hold a chair in front of your face so someone could do an Arabian moonsault right onto it, you may be in pain the next day. That's true, because a lot of that stuff hurts. It's not supposed to, but it does. And folks, if you're in pain, not mental pain, we can't help you with that Uh, this particular product so if you're watching some modern wrestling and your head hurts in that way we can't help you but if you've got physical pain the folks at omax have you covered folks we've talked about the cryo freeze roll on the pain relief roll on it's so popular it relieves joint pain of muscle soreness and aches from exercising and etc well now the folks at omax have come out with the cryo freeze Advanced Joint Defense, it's a -a one-a-day supplement with the hemp-derived CBD and a proven ingredient called NEM that relieves joint discomfort and soreness in seven days or less. You just take one of these capsules in the morning when you get up, and in seven days or less, you're going to start feeling better on a regular basis. Of course, if you still bang yourself with some kind of pickaxe or something, you're going to want the cryo-freeze roll-on, but if you're dropping one of these bad boys once a day, You notice it without having to apply any creams or roll-ons or ointments or potions or the like. And right now, if you go to Omax, that's O-M-A-X, omaxhealth.com, and enter the code J-C-E, then you can get 20% off Omax CryoFreeze Advanced Joint Defense and any of the other products site-wide. And uh, Stacy just reordered for her uh, her mother, who's had a hip replacement, a knee replacement. As a matter of fact, not only is the heating pad helping, but she's ordered some more roll-on for herself for the uh, the back situation. Of course, that's that's going to require uh, further intervention, but it helps. Uh, basically, if you're sore or achy for any reason, go to omaxhealth.com and get 20% off anything on the whole site by using the code omaxhealth.com intercode jce how much more can we help people brian 